Halo, 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 Halo. Halo. Halo, 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 halo. Halo, mic test on duty. Halo, halo, halo.
हेलो 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 अभी करना है हेलो हेलो माइक टेस्टिंग हेलो 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 टेस्टिंग हेलो टेस्ट वन टू थ्री हेलो 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 टेस्टिंग माइक हेलो टेस्टिंग माइक नहीं नहीं यूट्यूब में थर्टी सेकंड्स के लिए आता है या तीस सेकंड आधा मिनट के बाद आता है यूट्यूब में
हेलो चेक चेक हेलो चेक चेक I request everyone to please switch off their mobile phones or put it on silent mode. Uh, please ensure that nobody phones rings or vibrate while the proceedings are going on. Thank you.
a uh, small set of instructions for everybody who will be witnessing the proceedings please switch off your mobile phones or put it on silent mode while the court is in session we do not want any movement so kindly be seated wherever you are please avoid talking amongst yourselves making any kind of uh, gestures or uh, prompts and uh, please maintain highest level of decorum once if you get in or get in outside this moot court hall understand that there is a court proceeding going on please respect the judges bow and come inside bow and then leave right i think these are the basic courtroom etiquettes that we all should know to follow press please ensure that there is proper decorum and discipline while the proceedings are on thank you everyone No.
सर ऊपर या नीचे I request everyone to keep their phone on silent or switch it off. I request everyone to keep their phone on silent or switch it off. सारी स्पोर्ट्स में टीम कोड लिखे हुए हैं। लूपा मार के मेमोरी में
The judges are coming. Please switch off your mobile phones. Good afternoon, everybody. So before beginning with the proceedings of the final round, I request every volunteer, attendees, participants, faculties, management, everyone to put their phone on silent or either switch it off. And I'll request everyone to please maintain the decorum of the court. So now the court in session, I request the uh, appellants to approach the dice and seek permission for the proceedings. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Council seeks permission to address the bench collectively as your lordships. Yes. Much obliged, your lordships. Good afternoon. I'm Council One on behalf of the appellants Munio Investments Private Limited in this instant matter, your lordships. I will be dealing with issue one and 2.1 in 20 minutes, and my co counsel will be dealing with issue 2.2 in 15 minutes. Your lordships, we would respectfully reserve 15 minutes for rebuttals. Yes. Your Lordships, with the permission of your Lordships, the Council seeks permission to proceed with the submissions. Yes, proceed. Much obliged, your Lordships. Why every time you want permission? So blanket one permission, full we'll yes. Much obliged, your Lordships. Your Lordships, owing to the paucity of time, the Council seeks permission to move proceed uh, to proceed with the submissions directly rather than delving into the facts. No, no, facts briefly you can summarize. Certainly, your Lordships. Summarize. Your Lordships, this instant matter is against the grave injustice that Munio, Limit, uh, Munio Investments Private Limited has been subjected to that are the appellants in this instant matter, Your Lordships. Your Lordships, it is pertinent to note that if you look at the mood proposition, Your Lordships, Para 5 talks about how, Para 5 talks about how in 2019, Plosh Technologies Private Limited, Your Lordships, has approached the appellants in this instant matter, Munio Investments Limited, for a PPM. They have done so to raise funds to manufacture a biotechnological product. And to do so, investments have been made from Munio of worth rupees, uh, worth dollars, 80 million. Your Lordships, preceding this, Plosh has in fact gone ahead and entered into a contract with Slowtech. Uh, Slowtech Research Laboratories Private Limited to create the very product that has been promised to Munio. Your Lordships, further this, we can clearly see that uh, Slotech has failed to deliver any sort of pro prototype regarding this very pro uh, product that has been discussed. And the same has not been notified to Munio. Further, what happens is pandemic hits everyone and all the countries around the world are definitely affected by it. And therefore, when Munio doesn't re require or doesn't receive any sort of intimation from Plosh, Munio sends an inquiry, your lordships, to Plosh, seeking understanding of the status of the prototype, firstly. And secondly, the very uh, utilization of funds, the $80 million that have been invested, just the very basic understanding of where that has been utilized. Your lordships, in response to this, Munio, uh, Plosh, uh, in where, Plosh Technologies Private Limited does nothing but respond with a simple answer stating that the, proto the prototype is only in the developmental stage and no other answer your lordships. Further, because Munio itself in the very matter was not satisfied with this reply, went ahead in 2021, the next year, because they were not granted a visa in that particular year. The next year when they sent an inquiry your lordships, what was found? And that must be noted is that only 10% of the $80 million was utilized for the funding of the product. Your Lordships, and the rest of the money was used for nothing but the operation cost of the company itself, which is Plosh, was using that money for their own operations, which also, Your Lordships, included the managerial salaries. Your Lordships, why this... Why are all these facts? Why they are necessary? What is the dispute, what is the dispute between you 
suddenly a lot of the reason why these facts become necessary is they raise the very foundation be about which the uh, appellants in this matter filed a criminal proceeding against these uh, against the respondent. The issues here, respond things maybe what are the inner dealings between you? Certainly, certainly a lot. So, yes. to summarize the facts, uh, basically what happens is proceeding this. Essential facts that help you to continue with your dispute, to canvas the dispute. I think that much you can restrict. Certainly. The entire story, I think, doesn't uh, concern us. Noted, your lordships, yes. to do I so. The appellate court. Yes, sir. Yes. Your lordships, definitely preceding this, nothing has happened, but appellants have further gone ahead and uh, started, initiated criminal proceedings against the respondents in the matter. The judicial magistrate has also allowed the same, but against that very. What are, what are the allegations against you? Uh, your lordships, yes. appellants have filed the sections uh, allegations against the respondents under section 420 and section 120b that deal with cheating and so you, criminal you consequences. Filed, you filed the, uh, we have filed the. Uh, what, what, what is the basis for you to make make allegations? Uh, certainly, your lordships. Your lordships, I will be dealing with those in my submissions right now. Just to conclude, the main reason behind this very uh, instant matter, your lordships, is the high court or high court of Nutan's order, your lordships, which basically was somewhere where the respondents in this matter very conveniently went to the Honorable High Court to quash the criminal proceedings that we initiated against them. Mm. And against that very order, we have approached the Honorable Supreme Court, yes. your lordships. Uh, your lordships, if you are satisfied with the facts, the council seeks permission to proceed. No, no, what, are the, what are your allegations against the respondent? Uh, your lordships, the allegations against the respondents are section 120B, which is criminal conspiracy, and section 420 of the Sakin Penal Code. Your lordships, Sakin, the 420, the allegation of cheating will be dealt with by me, whereas the co-counsel will be dealing I'm with asking the... asking what, what were the allegations against the respondent? Your lordships, that they have, in, they have induced us into giving them money for a particular uh, objective and therefore have failed to abide by it and took it for deceived they deceived us into believing something that they were going to deliver to us and have failed to do so and have now tried to uh, just avoid the liability for the same. Your Lordships, may yes. I proceed? Yes. Your Lordships, to further proceed with my submissions, I would firstly like to declare or uh, ish address my first issue, which is the maintainability of this very, peti uh, this very petition, Your Lordships. This has been entered under Article 136 of the Sakyan Constitution, Your Lordships. Yes. Sakyan Constitution's 136 article deals with the supervisory jurisdiction, the extraordinary jurisdiction of the Supreme Court, Your Lordships. Whether leave has been granted? Uh, your Lordships. Whether leave has been granted to you to appeal? Your Lordships, I'm uh, seeking the leave. Seeking the leave now. Sorry, yes. Your Lordships. Right. Your Lordships, 136, as you may already know, Your Lordships provides a wide discretionary part of the Supreme Court, Your Lordships, and the same must be organized, on, the same must be utilized only in matters of grave injustice. Your Lordships, in this particular matter, firstly, we have the local standard because the order we're appealing against is an order where we were a party in the Honorable High Court. And because we're grieved, deeply aggrieved by it, the same has been brought under uh, before this Honorable Supreme Court. Secondly, you, you meant to say that the High Court had uh, no jurisdiction or uh, inherent powers to quash it? Uh, your Lordships, the council can never argue that the High Court does not have the jurisdiction. Whereas the council honestly and humbly submits that the jurisdiction that must be exercised has been laid down in a particular manner. Your Lordships, any case, which any criminal proceeding that must be quashed under Article uh, 227 with read with 482 of CP, CRPC, it must follow certain guidelines. Your Lordships. Why, why, where do you get that? Article, Article 227 is for quashing. Uh, your Lordships, no. Article 227 merely gives the uh, Honorable High Court the supervising jurisdiction, Your yes. Lordships, whereas our Section 482 of the CRPC provides them with the inherent power to quash a criminal proceeding if they deem it to be in the interest of justice. Okay. Your Lordships, the reason why that has not been met in this particular scenario, Your Lordships, is because in the state of uh, Haryana versus Bhajanlal, clear demarcations have been made where a criminal proceeding can be quashed. Your Lordships, in that, the only basis that an Honorable High Court has to look at is whether prima facie, a case alleging the offences can be made out or not. In this case, Your Lordships, the counsel for the appellant can clearly prove that there has been, if not the very uh, proof of the conspiracy and the cheating, the very reasonable doubt which demands for a prosecution of Lordships, and the very fact that even before the criminal proceedings could be initiated or begun, the appell the respondents in this matter have very conveniently gone and quashed the very same and therefore it has what is not the, what, is, what is the ground on which the 
for criminal proceedings are quashed your lordship uh, 480 uh, the criminal proceeding the reason given by the honorable high court was simply that prima facie the case is not established and therefore the does it not does it not does it not fall within 482 your lordship it definitely certainly does then then why do you say that uh, it has uh, failed to exercise the jurisdiction or exceeded its jurisdiction your lordship it has certainly done it what is the case for you your lordships uh, when i talk about the jurisdiction your lordships state of Bhaj the state of haryana versus bhajanlal lays down certain situations where a criminal proceeding can be quashed in that one of the main requirements that are placed is if prima facie a case can't be established only then can you go ahead and quash the proceedings your lordships my submission before this honorable supreme court is simply just that that prima facie a case can be established your lordship there are so many gray areas in this particular matter that the fact that that hasn't been delved into the fact that there can be no criminal proceeding initiated against it anymore further would not support the interest of justice your lordship therefore i require permission from your honorable uh, supreme court to proceed with my submission what is, what is the prima facie case in this your lordships to do so to further answer your question your lordships i would like to move to my second issue where i will establish cheating no, no, what is the what is the prima facie case you find in this uh, your lordships the prima facie case is that they have committed the offense of cheating and criminal conspiracy your lordship and the further can pro be proven by me and my uh, co counsel and therefore i require your permission to proceed with the submissions to further yes. establish the jurisdiction as well yes. much obliged your lordships so i have a i have a question it may yes, not be in your memorial. Why is Lotech involved in this litigation? Uh, your ladyship. Huh. Okay. Thank you, your ladyship. Uh, your ladyship, Slotech in this particular matter, if you look at it, is the third party, your ladyship. Slotech is the company that has been approached by Plosh, the respondents in this instant matter, to create the product that has that is in dispute in this moment, your lordship, your ladyship. And further in my proceedings, I will uh, clarify all other doubts regarding Slotech as well. No, no, no. You're not answered at all that question. Uh, See why? Why that is a necessary party? A criminal. Uh, uh, what do you call? How can you proceed against a person against whom there is no allegations at all? What is the role? Just because you had a civil transaction with them, does it yeah. lead you to implead, implead a person or yeah. implicate? And, and also, sir, my question was also a uh, privative contract. Like, doesn't the criminal case have to follow a privative contract, or can anybody and go and sue anybody or file an FIR against anybody? Uh, Where is the privative contract? I know this is not there, but I just want to hear what you think. Your ladyship, I certainly agree. Privity of contract must be followed at all times. If I did not, uh, that therefore, in this particular case, the case has been filed only between Munu and Plosh, your ladyship. Therefore, Slotech in this particular instance is not a point of concern at all. The only reason why Slotech is important is because Slotech plays a very fundamental role in proving the conspiracy in this particular instant matter. Therefore, the same will also be further dealt with by my co counsel. But right now, to prove the cheating, I would may seek a permission. Simple one line you can say that because they are dragged in on the principles of uh, under uh, conspiracy. So that puts an end. Yes. Certainly, your uh, one line is enough. Certainly, your lordship. I will. Uh, the council will definitely keep that in mind later on. Yes. Your your lordship proceeding with the offence of cheating in Ramjas versus State of Uttar Pradesh very clearly has been certain uh, criteria or certain um, certain points have been laid out. The essentials, your lordships, have been laid down for the offence of cheating under four twenty. Firstly, there should be a fraudulent or a dishonest inducement. Secondly, that must that must result in the de delivery of some property. And thirdly, it must end up with some damage, harm being caused to it. Your lordships, in this instant matter, let me allow, uh, please allow me to create a chain of events. Your lordships, if you may refer to page para five of the mood proposition, very clearly, it has been stated that Plosh has approached Munio to receive investment for, a, uh, for the development of a product, right? And when the money has been invested, it has been invested inter alia for the manufacturing of a wearable device that will project a 3D image of a mobile screen on the palm of a user. Your Lordships, further, after this, Plosh has gone ahead with the contract with Slowtech to create this product. Initially, it has uh, very clearly mentioned that the product would be created by them. Proceeding this, they have gone ahead and despite that very uh, assumption, have gone ahead and created a product, create a contract with Slowtech to create that product. Your Lordship, this the same was something that Munio was aware of. Moving forward, your Lordships. In para seven. No, what was the false representation yeah. there? What? Uh, certainly, your lordship. Your lordships, in this particular instance, if you may see, even after para seven, even in para seven, when we're talking about the prototypes that are developed, all the prototypes, your lordships, are 
couldn't they the slowtech itself the third party could not present a workable model firstly and despite that they continued providing just false or like uh, prototypes which just failed to comply with the size and the utility this your lordship has not been conveyed to munio the people who the product is being given to your lordships there was a time bound agreement of 2 years okay one I second oh, uh, yeah go ahead this i understand you objectively define how the there is a context of subjective element where you and i intend sorry what is the subjectivity in that you establish by a line of fact certainly your lordship you do it and that's understood but does that really establish anything more than that your lordship the reason the establishment that i'm trying to prove here is that if you clearly look at para 8 it talks about the inquiry that i had earlier mentioned only 10% your lordship of the funds that were allocated for the product were utilized in the development of the product your lordship it's a very simple understanding if i believe that the objective of a contract is to pr produce a particular product or to develop a product i will ensure that all the funds available to do so should be available with the company if in this instant matter your lordship Slo uh, plosh has failed to provide the funding to slotech in the not just your lordship with an insufficient funding it is insufficient to such an extent that slotech has gone way beyond and sought other investments from different parties your lordship different creditors the money that they your lordship it must be noted that the very essence of their contract was to fund the development and if the very purpose of that product isn't met they are dishonestly representing to us that they did initially apparently uh, want to deliver a product therefore went to a third party and then failed to give the third party sufficient amount to create the product and therefore just sought some sort of disguise of the pandemic to ruin and to remove themselves of all liability or lordships see that is a business strategy mm -hmm. how they have to earn the profit and how they have to it is they decide how does the representation made by them as affected your right that will bring you within 420 certainly your lordship there must be to attract 420 what is the essential a uh, fraudulent or dishonest there must be a representation which is false certainly your lordship that must induce you to do something certainly your lordship i have to part with that i think that which is that representation which induced you to do commit this certain further acts which has led to the injury or this i think that should be the see, all these things their business dealings that does not give you a cause of action does not i think that's why high court is right saying that this prima facie does not disclose at all the, you said that i have got a prima facie case the yes. council uh, certainly understands your concern your lordship and the, but the council begs to disagree your lordship simply regarding this in this particular instance the only reason why the investment has been made was on the belief was on the promise that they will be creating and giving us a product your lordship in this particular instance it can be seen that knowing that it's a technology is private limited and they Whether themselves come to us the belief is based on any of their representation certainly your lordship is it contained in any document your lordships in the very proposition it can be stated that they have come to us seeking investment for the product your lordships if they are coming to us so to induce rep us representative uh, what you call a false representation is found in which uh, in the brochure or in the memorandum Your lordship, the false representation is found clearly in the moot proposition. Your lordships, the reason why, the reason moot being, your lordships, you are building up a case. Where do you find this? From the facts, your lordships, from the facts of this very instance, Plosh Technologies Limited have, from the very onset, yes. approached the appellants in this matter to invest in a particular product. They have. portrayed themselves to be capable of creating such a product thereby inducing us into okay. making an investment in their particular company so yes who yeah, was sure. the product for it was for plosh only right sir you know it was not for for you uh, the product was not being created for you your leadership the product was being created hmm. for us you're a venture capital firm yes sir your leadership uh, the council uh, The, the council would like to correct itself. The Plosh had received fifteen percent equity, so the product that has been being used, the Plosh has, uh, the Munio has received fifteen percent equity for that very product. The reason why it becomes so essential is that the shares and the money that the investments that I have made require certain returns, and the returns would come to me only after the development of such a product, and that same had to be done within two years. They have firstly failed to provide Slotech with sufficient amount to create such a product. Secondly, they have failed to inform us that any product that has been any prototype also that has been created is not sufficient, has not been met, uh, meeting the mark. Thirdly, your leadership, even when we have approached them, understanding the pressure that everyone had been put under during the pandemic, the immense uh, the council 
of the appellants humbly understands and empathizes with the entire country of Sakya that dealt with pandemic in a much worse manner than any other country out there, your, your, your ladyship. But what must be considered is despite that, this is not a result of mere pandemic. This is not a result of mere uh, risk factor of the product, your ladyship. The reason why the product isn't delivered is the very reason that Plosh themselves did not want the product to be to be delivered. They have received the money, your ladyship, Not maximum amount of the money, apart from the 10%, your ladyships, has been used for their own operation costs. See, I only have, your argument is, they distributed the money, they gave it slow tech 10%. Do you think that kind of liability also exists on you to find out what they are doing? There is a certain amount of distribution to the company also that they're doing, right? How does that establish anything that you want to trying to tell us? Uh, your ladyship, the simple reason being, in this particular instance, Munio has tried to find out where exactly the funds have been utilized. And the Munio has tried to do so from uh, Plosh itself. Plosh has failed to give us any real answers. Only when Munio have themselves gone, they have realized that most of the fund has been misappropriated. 90% has been used for the salaries. Uh, maximum percent has been used for the own operation costs for their own managerial salaries, your lordships. Was and there a contract between you and uh, the respondent? Certainly, your lordships. That are you whether your claim is based or allegations are based on the violation of the contractual terms? Uh, your lordships, the council understands the concern. Therefore, it can be looked at. If you look at all the events, your lordships, it can be clearly established that maybe if you look at it in isolation, a criminal or a civil dispute may arise. But your lordships, it is further contended only if you look at it in isolation. No, in we, we don't look at it now. Whether according to you, whether this has arisen out of a contract. How does it get a criminal color? How does it? That you point out. Your lordship simply because the Otherwise, men... you have to go to the your forum is entirely different. Your lordship yes. simply understood. In the reason, your lordships are required 30 seconds to proceed and summarize. Uh, yes. Much obliged, your lordship. The reason why this becomes a criminal matter and not a civil matter, your lordships, is because there's the establishment of mens rea. Cheating in itself, your lordships, is something we're accusing them of because we can establish all the particular essentials. Firstly, the dishonest inducement, the promise to deliver something and the failure to do so. Secondly, they have done so for our money, your lordships. Further, they have done so and that has caused us immense loss, your lordships, because... So do you know one of the fundamental principles that intention to deceive should be there at the inception of the transaction, inception of the contract. Does your contract disclose that? Your Lordships, it can clearly, uh, certainly it does. Uh, anything, anything that happens subsequently do not give rise to a cause of action at all. Your Lordships. The High Court might not have uh, uh, word, uh, worded in that manner, but we don't find anything uh, wrong in that, in your, that sense. Your Lordships, the council certainly agrees that at the inception, the dishonest intention must be prevalent. But your Lordships... No, whether in this case, was it uh, obvious or not? Your Lordships, if you look at the chain of events, your Lordship, we can be certainly deduced that it is. Your Lordships, the See, very... The conduct subsequently does not prove an intention at the inception. See, if I ask you to enter into a contract with a clear intention not to perform it, or if I want to uh, promise a lady that I will marry you and there is a clear intention not to marry you, then I deceive. I make a promise without any intention. But when? At the time of making the promise, that is at the inception. So unless you are, contract, you are able to show that at the time of entering into the contract, there was an intention to deceive, there is no cause of action under criminal law. Your maybe right may be arising under the civil law. So there is a clear demarcation. Uh, certainly, your lordships. Your lordships, in this instant matter, if you look at the very onset of the promise that has been made, your lordships. Yes. Your lordships, may I require 30 seconds yes. to answer your question? Yes, yes. Much obliged, your lordships. Your lordships, in this instant matter, the intention in itself cannot be proven on the uh, very abstract facts available right now. Your lordships, despite that, if we look at the very intention, in the very beginning, they have dishonestly induced us into when there, giving them... When there is a contract, you can't build an argument saying that uh, I am inferring uh, intention from on, in the abstract. No. I think you are basing on the contract where you say that this has given rise to. That uh, is the starting point. Humble apologies, your lordship. Yes. In this instant matter, if you look at Plosh's... Uh, okay, we'll hear the other side. Let's see. Hmm? Yes. Certainly, your lordships. Your lordships, the... Uh, the council seeks permission to proceed yes. with the co-council submissions. 
it was an honor arguing before this bench. Thank you. Much obliged. Thank you. Sir. Second, second issue. Yes. The council seeks permission to address the honorable bench collectively as your lordships. Yes. Much obliged, Your Lordships. Your Lordships, I am counsel number two of the appellant in the present case, and I will be dealing with issue number 2.2. Uh, the council seeks permission to begin with our first issue and humbly submits that Plosh and Slow Tech have. What is, what is issue number two? 2.2. .2. Yeah, what is that issue? That Plosh and Slow Tech have co conspired against the appellant in this case. Hmm. Your Lordships, the council will be establishing this particular issue by three pronged submissions. Number one is that the essentials of criminal conspiracy attract in the present case. Number two, that there is a uh, nexus of uh, criminal conspiracy given the uh, relationship status of the top executives of both the companies. Number three, that to prove the criminal conspiracy, the relevance of circumstantial evidence will be established. Your Lordship, proceeding with my first issue, First submission, criminal conspiracy as per section 120A of Sakin Penal Code includes an illegal act or a legal act done through illegal means. Here, what we're talking about is an illegal act of cheating. It, uh, the council would like to direct your lordship's attention to para 35 of the written submissions of the appellant, where the element of criminal conspiracy are laid down. The same can be noticed in the present case. Your what, lordship. What does, what, the, what does it say? The where, elements where is, of criminal conspiracy. Uh, what, 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 does it, what does it say? Uh, yes, Lord, your lordships. The first element being an objective to be uh, accomplished. The object of the respondent company and slow tech was to receive investments from the appellant by way of cheating and dishonestly inducing the appellant to make the investments. Number two is then a plan or a scheme which was brought into play by the respondent company to utilize those investments into objective which were not agreed upon. It is clear from the facts of the case, uh, your lordship, that the respondent had the necessary finances to fund the development of the de uh, device, and still they held back the finances, even when the actual company developing the product, that is slow tech, was going into insolvency. What your lordship, essence, what is the essence of conspiracy? Uh, there should be an understanding between. There should be an agreement between uh, the uh, that two persons. Uh, that is the essence. Yes. So to be a conspiracy, there must be an uh, understanding or an agreement between. Only an agreement. Whether agreement alone is enough. Uh, no, your uh, your lordships. Um... Should it lead to any act? Sorry, you say that the essence of a conspiracy is an agreement. Agreement hmm. between between whom? Between two persons. To do what? To do, to commit an illegal act. To do an illegal act. Or an illegal act through illegal, illegal means. means. Hmm. Should that act be carried out? To say that that is the conspiracy. Uh, or is it a mere agreement? Is enough? Whether agreement by itself constitutes an offense? Just, just a moment. Yes. Hmm. Uh, your lordships, uh, the the uh, council would like to take the notebook from there. If uh, would like to refer a book from the. Yes, yes, sure, sure. Your lordships. See, we both of us conspire hmm. uh, to what you call uh, to keep some dynamite in uh, alliance. Hmm. Whether that's an offense, and we have, but don't do keep at all. <laughs> we don't keep at all. No dynamite. We have not bought, but both of us agree. Yes, Is it an lordship. offense or not? Yes, your lordships. It will be an offense. Ah. The council just needed the reference. Uh, so and no over. Out of the book, you are sure. Yes. The council wanted to be sure of what she is pleading yes, in front of this honorable yes. bench. Uh, in a case where an agreement for an accomplished of an act by in itself, which by in itself constitutes an offense, then an act, an overt act is not necessary. Act. Right. Yes. However, if there is a legal act in the second scenario where the second uh, or uh, of the okay, 128. Council, at, least, at least now we have come to the point that there must be an agreement. Where is the agreement between the spoke operator plus the respondent? In this entire uh, this one, 
so that we can save much of the time now if you come to the crux of it. Yes, your lordships. Uh, your lordships, there is an agreement or understanding between uh, uh, Plosh and Slotek in the present case scenario. However, uh, this I will uh, have the lord, uh, lordships understand through this uh, through these certain points. Number one, your lordships, it is it cannot be overlooked in this present case that the top executives of both the companies are in a living relationship. There is a complete conflict of interest between the contract which was made between Plosh and Slotech, which was never told to Munio in the uh, when the uh, initiation of this such agreement was done. So agreement is to live in relationship. No, the agreement. The, so, to, the to agreement ruin, to, to ruin the uh, ruin you. So which means by, if they were not by our agreement, yes, if, which means if they were not living in, it wouldn't have cons been a conspiracy. Are you trying to say that? Uh, it's you're... low tech and your company or uh, the other one i'm just forgetting right were not the the ceos were not living together that you had no claim to a conspiracy then yes your lordship so your, your foundational basis is that they're living in right yes your lordship and that's because... how you're arguing your point yes your lordship uh, the only reason being that the uh, the immense uh, the nexus of the understanding comes from the fact that they were living in together. However, the other point can all can uh, is also that both the companies were aware that their product cannot be developed. Your lordship, it is clear from the mood proposition that Slotech was unable to create a pro pro prototype which was up to the mark. Plosh was well aware of, aware of this fact. Both of the companies did not see deem it fit to. Uh, tell the same to Munio, which is the appellant in this present case, and still uh, pre proceeded to use the funds as in, as in they wished. If I can counter-argue with you, unable and unwilling are two different things. Certainly, How do you Lord. establish the point of unwilling then to say unable? Unable is an R&D process. I may fail the product and many places the product fails yes your lordship but how do you establish the unwillingness to establish the conspiracy first? yeah your lordship it is pertinent to note that this particular agreement between plosh and munio is a time-bound contract your uh, plosh was given two years to uh, create this particular product now if slow tech is unable to create this product uh, uh, sorry, Plosh should have pulled out the finances. They didn't. Do, they did not do that. They should have at least, at the minimum, because we know that this is because of the quality of pandemic. At least they should have told us that we need like extra time. That R and D will take extra time. They also did not do that. Your, your lordships. They did not tell us how their our funds were using used. They just used the funds as they deemed fit and. Uh, continue to do so only when we sent an inquiry, initial inquiry, uh, is when we received a uh, uh, response saying that pandemic is, a, is the reason why we are not able to produce. Your Lordship, if pandemic was the uh, reason that they were not able to produce, the pandemic has been there for one year. If they were facing a problem, they should have told it to us as and when they faced the problem in the primary stage. They did not do so. They kept it to themselves. They kept on using the funds. After that... But your grievance is because they did not come to you, did not inform you. So your lordships you felt very bad and therefore you thought that let them drag to the criminal court and well, where is it? that must be basis see to invoke yeah. the criminal jurisdiction mm. and that too by attracting or invoking section 120b mm. once but you cannot have a direct evidence but your allegations must disclose some kind of agreement between them yes your lordship and to do something some damage to you there is absolutely nothing you say that the position would have altered if only they had come and informed me. Your lordship. That itself shows that you have initiated just to, to compel them to come to terms. That's yeah. You see, I also shows, have a point what Sir is saying. 2019, the whole product starts. 2021, barely two years, where you want a product to be r and d thereafter shown a prototype tested and after testing, giving it a sampling on uh, the stage of R&D fourth, and then fourth is going out to the market for where you can start earning. So you want to say in two years, the product is researched, product goes through these four stages, which is mandatory for it to come into the market. So where is your inflection point to say that this is the point where they, they, they did wrong? Or what was the tipping point of your information? Your lordship, your lordship, the grievance of the appellant here is the wrongful gain 
which the uh, which the respondents have uh, have done from this particular case scenario your lordships if i'm allowed to live they uh, the the top executives of the both the companies are in a living relationship okay, i need to know why that is relevant uh, i will proceed. assume they are not living in assume they are married assume why, why is that relevant uh, your ladyship that is very much essential to understand that there was an understanding between the two companies how is that no both... i'm still not able to get it Re try that again why is a live in relationship relevant here your ladyship it is relevant because there is no way plosh was not aware or the md of the plosh which is the top executive of plosh was not aware of the financial situation of slow tech there is no way that he was not aware of the fact that they are unable to produce the uh, the product in both the case scenarios they deemed it fit to not in, uh, inform uh, muni about it or request for an extension in the contract or anything else they simply used the the maximum amount of the funds in uh, the maximum amount of the funds for themselves rather and they did not even fund slow tech at this at this juncture so whether the knowledge of these individuals is the knowledge of the company who is the who is the respondent here plosh uh, company yes now we bring in this uh, uh, this one whether the knowledge of the constituents or the individuals is it a knowledge of the company can you sue the company for the knowledge is a company in uh, in legal terms what do we call them uh, they are a yes judicial uh, name yes. they are artificial uh, uh, is it an entity, entity by itself yes. entity by itself hmm. can you say that the knowledge of uh, individuals is a knowledge of the company your lordship but that you say that aware of course i do not know on what legal basis you can uh, frame a complaint stating that that aware and how are going to prove it any of let us accept that they were aware whether the knowledge or the awareness of the constituent is it a knowledge of the company why do you sue you sue that those who are persons individuals your lordship the is it a offense by the company or a knowledge of the company your lordships uh, for the same uh, it is pertinent to note that both the officials of the company are high ranking officials who can easily influence the business transactions of the company for this the council will also rely on the case of iridium versus uh, india iridium india telecom limited versus motorola incorporated a case of 2011 where the honorable supreme court uh, held that it is evident that the corporation is virtually in the same position as an individual and may be convicted of common law as well as statutory offenses including those requiring mens rea the criminal liability for a corporation would arise when an offense is committed in relation to the business of the corporation here uh, your lordship business of both the companies and mr uh, munio is in question by a person or a body of person control of its affairs oh, that iridium does not to apply to your, uh, this one mm. these submissions see there there was a misrepresentation in the private placement memorandum that was the basis to proceed here you are building up these allegations on totally irrelevant and unconnectable uh, uh, facts your lordship uh... <laughs> even though the facts of the case were slightly different the not slightly fully different it is not that because you say that because they had a legal relationship they were aware of their uh, uh, dealings and therefore they have conspired and therefore i want them to be brought i think that is where see the linking yes uh, your lordships uh, the council is uh, essentially relying on this particular case for the ratio of the case which the honorable uh, honorable supreme court has laid down that is that if there is a corporation whose uh, uh, where it's an act is committed by the people in control of its affairs then such corporation then then a uh, charge of criminal proceedings can be brought against such corporation that is 420 ratio for 420 not 120b yes your lordship it is about uh, 120 because it talks about the conspiracy uh, because it is another uh, it is another case conspiracy another decision yes <laughs> Yes. another because uh, your lordship as your lordship all, uh, himself uh, a few minutes earlier uh, had made me uh, had the help the council understand that the understanding is an essential element of conspiracy understanding uh, itself makes a mens rea and here the case has uh, here the supreme court has told that mens rea any case uh, any criminal uh, 
allegations requiring mens rea can also be brought against the corporations in question here again the business of the corporation have been uh, affected here again the the people in question are in the control of the affairs of both the corporations i have to you have to help me in this space if i say that your argument is presumptuous and not even assumptions you are presumptuous this happened this happened this is all presumptuous and you are saying i assume this and we assume they're living together they were having to partner your next the, the second part is okay that's a legal argument is okay there's mens rea involved but my argument is with you is that or my point of view is that you are on a presumptuous basis then even then even in an assumption phases your lordship such presumptions can be proved only in a trial proceeding which the appellant is seeking here all the appellant here is praying today is that we are allowed to hold a, a trial proceeding so that we can your lordship i request 30 seconds to summarize yes uh much obliged all the appellant here is requiring is a is uh, is for this honorable court to allow a, a uh, trial proceeding so that we can uh, prove our presumption on the basis of the trial yes uh your lordships uh there is another sub issue uh, so the council would request to move on to the sub issue that is the circumstantial evidence in this particular right. case right the time i yeah uh, any one minute the circumstantial what are the circumstantial evidence you have got you don't have direct evidence <laughs> huh? your lordship uh, it is uh, it is very whether, much whether conspiracy can be proved by direct evidence no your lordship because a conspiracy uh, is well, all so what are the circumstances to prove conspiracy the very presumptions and the chain of events which my co counsel and i have laid down in this particular case is the circum is the basis of the circumstantial evidence which the uh, uh, the councils would like to submit uh, that is their knowledge live in relationship these exactly. are the circumstances so yes. yes the circumstances which led to this particular hearing today uh, your lordship the council would like to move on to the prayer is there any provision under the evidence act where a statement or a relationship between the two Between the co-conspiracy, also becomes relevant. Uh, your lordship, is there the, any provision? One, one word. Your lordship, section ten talks exactly. about. You are right. You are perfectly right. Yes. Let us know uh, how it is applicable. It is difficult, but uh, at least yes. The council seeks permission to move towards the prayer. Yes. All right. Wherein, for in the light of facts stated, issues raised, arguments advanced, and authorities cited. it is humbly requested that the honorable court may be pleased to hold a judge and declare that the order of the honorable high court is set aside and the proceedings before the judge, judicial magistrate are allowed and or pass any other order it may deem fit in the interest of justice equity and good conscience all of which is most respectfully prayed and humbly submitted thank you your lordships thank it was you. a pleasure contending yes. before this honorable bench Well, one just, one just, just one second. Yes, I 
May it please this honorable court, this is council number one, appearing on behalf of the respondents in the present case. If your lordships may permit, the council would like to proceed with the maintainability of this issue. Much obliged. Your lordships, the present. Yes. Your lordships, the present petition that has been. You are done. Yeah. Yes. Your lordships, the pe petition that has been filed by the petitioners in the instant case under Article 136 of the Constitution is not maintainable for two reasons. Firstly, that there is no substantial question of law that is involved in the present case, and that the High Court has correctly quashed the criminal proceedings that were initiated against the respondents. And why no do open. The, why do you say High Court has correctly quashed? Your lordship, what no. Kind of, what kind of reasoning is that? Your lordship, no open question was left undetermined by the High Court. Your lordship, they uh, found that it was not a fit case wherein a prima facie case was established uh, by the petitioners, which is why they quashed the proceedings. You and mean to say that in the complaint there are allegations which disclose the offense, should they not be investigated? Your lordship, in the, can it be thrown out at the first junction, saying that so I can understand prima facie no case if does not make out? There are very serious direct allegations. Which is squarely attract 420, 120B. Why do you say that High Court is justified? And how do you refuse us to give leave? Your Lordship, the High Court can only uh, look into whether a prima facie case has been established in this regard, Your Lordship. The court did not go into the uh, merits of the case because this is a frivolous complaint, and only when a prima facie case has been established can the court further go into the uh, merits of the case itself. See, we counsel, are... prima facie case has to be, be uh, gathered based on what? Based on the arguments in the complaint. Huh. We are contending that the complaint that was filed by the petitioners do not in any way even show an iota of an offense that can be uh, uh, gathered from uh, section 420 and 120b of the Sarkin Penal Code, which is why we're stating that firstly, there is no substantial question of law. And secondly, no grave injustice has been caused to the petitioner in the present case. Therefore, there is no reason for the interference of this court in this present matter, your lordships, which is why, we're why, why the proceedings are terminated uh, in the inception itself. You say that no injustice is caused. Your Lordship, this is a frivolous complaint. The petitioners have not established a case where an offence under 420 or 120B has been made out. They have time and again stated that we have not delivered the product. It is a case for breach of contract for which relief does not lie before this honourable court. The proceedings, they can initiate civil proceedings before another court. This is a criminal proceeding for which they should have shown that we had the intention to deceive them, that we had the intention to conspire and defraud them, which the petitioners have not shown in the present case before this honourable court. If they want to claim a mere breach of contract, let them go before another forum, your lordship. That is my only contention and that is why I'm stating that this pe petition See, is not maintainable. Clear, clear allegations that you have failed to supply and uh, what you call re invested in the wrong, this one. With that intention, there are allegations. It is not that a case without any allegations. See, they may not have sufficient material. It may not lead to the ultimate, uh, what you call, filing of the report. But the matter, as long as there are allegations and they disclose a criminal offense, that is enough. High court cannot. High court does not have a jurisdiction to, uh, what you call, inquire into all these things. Your Lordship, the High Court felt that a prima facie case has not been established in the instant case, which is why they quashed the criminal proceedings. And in Bajanlal case that the petitioners had relied on, they stated that where a criminal proceeding is manifestly attended with malefide or where the proceeding is maliciously instituted with an ulterior motive for wrecking vengeance on the accused and with a view to spite him, it can be quashed. So in the present case, the High Court felt that this is a frivolous complaint that was initiated against the respondents and that it was a case just for mere breach of contract. The petitioners instituted this case with a malicious intent to uh, put us through this entire proceeding and in fact waste the time of this honourable court. However, if this honourable court is of the uh, uh, opinion that this petition needs to be heard, we will proceed to argue on the merits of this case, Your Lordship. Yes. Much obliged. Your Lordship, the second uh, issue that the council will be dealing with as per a memorial is whether a company can be held liable for offences under Section 420 and 120B of the Sarkin Penal Code. Lots of the dictum that has been laid down in Iridium, which is followed till date, is this. A corporation can be held liable for offences that make the requirement of mens rea mandatory. We are stating, we are in fact challenging the law that has been laid down in the Iridium case. And as your Lordship had rightly observed, the facts are first of all different. And secondly, uh, in the Iridium case, the court had relied on the standard chartered bank case, uh, wherein 
uh, if your lordships may refer to page 22 of our compendium, mm. your lordship, in the standard chartered bank case, I am reading the relevant paragraph. It is only in a case requiring mens rea. A question arises whether a corporation could be attributed with requisite mens rea to prove the guilt. But as we are not concerned with this question in these proceedings, we do not express any opinion on this issue. So first of all, they did not delve into the question of men offenses involving mens rea. And secondly, if you may refer to page 30 of our compendium, in the standard chartered bank case, page 30 or lordships, they have stated the generally accepted modern rule is that except for such crimes as a corporation is held incapable of committing by reason of the fact that they involve personal malicious intent, a corporate may be subject to indictment or other criminal processes, so and so. So they have explicitly excluded crimes that uh, require mens rea as a requirement for to establish an offense. Which, which are the offenses corporation cannot commit? Corporations? Which are the offenses under IPC? A corporation cannot commit corporation or a company. Your lordship, uh, till now, uh, when can a corporation be held liable is when the offenses under IPC require mandatory imprisonment. Corporation, can it commit rape? Indeed not, your lordship. Cannot. When Can it commit murder? Your lordship, the no, actions of... Can it of... commit murder? It, indeed not, your lordship. Uh, can, it, uh, can it cheat? Can Indeed, it, it, this is, it can cheat your logic because the then, actions... Then now you say it does not come. Your logic... So what the, it says is that there are certain offenses which the corporation cannot commit, for which you cannot sue the corporation. And the position of law is now very clear. There are certain offenses which a corporation can commit. If the, uh, what we call it, uh, this offense is committed or a criminal liability of the corporation arises because of its activity in the course of the business, cannot the corporation be held liable? Your Lordship, my contention is only within the limits of whether a corporation can be held liable under 420. I'm asking, asking that only. See, here In... the allegation, they have come up with the specific allegations that your transactions of the corporations are making out an offense. There are specific allegations. That is the basis to implicate you as the, in your capacity, in the official capacity, the company. Otherwise, that they would have implicated that living relationship partners only. Your Lordship, this is a general question of law that the council has put before this honorable court. However, if you want me to address those aspects uh, at the right at this instance, I will move on to the merits no, to what show. Are the issue? What is the issue? Your Lordship, read I am that issue, read that issue. In the second issue, I am dealing with whether a company can huh. be held liable for an offense under section 420 and 120B of the Sakyan yes, Penal Code. That is. Now, do you agree whether the company can be a uh, conspirator? Whether a company can be uh, prosecuted for cheating? Your Lordship, my contention is that they cannot be because the position that has been laid down in Iridium is right. what the council's... point of law. Leave aside the principle of the facts. Because the issue is based on the point of law only. Your Lordship... Not the... on no facts. What are the issue? I agree, Your Lordship. Yes. The issue is with respect to 420 and 120B in, in the Iridium case, which is a... It is a two-judge bench of the Supreme Court. This court being a three-judge bench is well within the jurisdiction to overrule the Iridium case to hold that offenses which uh, require mens rea as a mandatory requirement would cannot be attributable to the corporation's liability, Your Lordship. That is all that the council is trying to make out in this argument. Without prejudice to this argument, I move on to uh, my last argument, which is pertaining to whether an offence under Section 420 of the Sakin Penal Code has been made out in the present case. Your Lordship, the essential ingredients for an offence to be made out under this section is firstly, uh, one, that there should be a deception. And secondly, based on this deception, the petitioner should have been induced to deliver a certain property. And overall, that Ultimately, there should have been mens rea on part of the respondents to uh, deceive the petitioners. The facts of this instant case clearly provide that the investment was raised by Plosh for the purpose of developing the wearable device. My learned counsels for the petitioner have, uh, in fact, made statements that Plosh did not want the product to be developed, which is not the uh, which is not what the facts state at all. If your lordships may refer to clarification number nine of the mood proposition. Clarification 9 uh, expressly states, Plosh was funding Slotech apart from the additional loans taken by Slotech themselves. Plosh has funded Slotech to develop the product. This clearly shows our intention in wanting to develop the product, your lordships. In fact, the mood proposition paragraph number 7 clearly states that we gave them repeated reminders 
to show whether they can present a workable model of this uh, product that they were trying to develop. So uh, our intention has been clear from the get go. We wanted to develop a product, which is why we entered into a contract with Munio, which is why we took funds from them. And we have invested it in the right way. In fact, if your lordships may refer to paragraph number five of the mood proposition, it clearly states the private placement memorandum of Flosh issued to Munio stated that the money raised was inter alia for the manufacturing of a wearable device, so and so. So inter alia, among other things, we have stated, so it can be uh, used for the development of the product. To develop the product, we need to pay the salaries of the employees. We need their intel. We need their process. We need to be able to uh, provide them with money so that they will work for us to develop the product. We, we see a causal relationship of intent, malified intent on your part. When you say that you can, you will deliver the product, you give the product to Slowtech, use the most of the money in paying the salary of your company employees, and there is a pure, there is a causal relationship. You I get the money, I give it to my employees, give just a marginal percentage to Slowtech, just to show that there's something being developed. Don't come back to them, uh, to the company. So there is a clear causal relationship at every stage which says there is a malefied intent. Indeed, not your lordships. There was an gen extraordinary general meeting held. Extraordinary general meeting held wherein we had disclosed into which Munio was a party that uh, there is a contract that is going to be entered between Plosh and Slotik for the development of the product. So Munio cannot at a later point come and see they are a third party and that they had no knowledge of the same and that we had a malified intent in giving them the contract. We are in... Uh, uh, we are a technological company and they are a research laboratory. Slotik is a research laboratory. They, uh, we were of the belief and we firmly believe that they had the competency and the resources to be able to develop this product, which is why we even entered into a contract and which the petitioners are well aware of, according to the extraordinary general meeting that was conducted. So just because we were not able to keep up our promise in the contract, they cannot at a later stage harass us with criminal proceedings. In fact, the council would like to rely on the case of Indian Oil Corporation versus NEPC, India Limited and others, wherein the Honorable Supreme Court observed that there is a growing tendency in business circles to convert purely civil disputes into criminal matters. Any effort to settle civil disputes and claim by applying pressure through criminal prosecution should be discouraged. Your Honours, in the present case, the petitioners first sent a legal notice to us and they claim compensation uh, in delay of development of the product, we denied them compensation, which is why they are directly before, uh, they are directly in initiated criminal proceedings in the instant matter. So this shows their malicious intent to harass us with a frivolous complaint, your lordship, which is why this honorable court need not entertain this petition. To gather from your argument is that both the parties are aware that there was diversion of funds. And that is contrary to the representation made in the brochure or at the initial uh, memorandum. Is it not? Both Dive. the parties were aware. Whether you say that uh, from what we can gather from your argument. So should that not be inquired? How it can be, the, the complaint could be quashed? Because there is diversion. Whether you have done it intentionally with the criminal intention and what is their conspiracy involved and all other things, they should go for investigation. So high yeah. court is wrong in uh, uh, this because one from your you also now admit that contrary to the representation contained in the memorandum there was diversion whether it has uh, led to the civil consequences or uh, any other things but we can see that it is contrary to the representation as long as it is contrary to the representation deception theory fraudulent theory suppression theory all these things comes into picture concealment yeah. of fact all these things come. So the High Court could not have caused it at the inception. Matter should have gone for uh, investigation. Your Lordship, it is my humble contention that there was no diversion of funds in the present case. Firstly, paragraph 8 states that 10% of the total funds were being used for the development of the product. The rest, the maximum amount of the remaining... Of the representation in the memorandum? We, the, uh, the facts are silent. We did not make any false representation stating we are allocating this many um, percentage of funds for this particular aspect and this many percentage of amount for a different aspect. The facts clearly state intra alia for the PPM was entered into intra alia for the manufacturing of the device. So among whether, other whether things... The, whether the device is manufactured? No, your lordship, because we are still in the developmental stage as per our representation, representation to Munio. Mm. 
uh, and the fact that we are in a we were in a pandemic during the process of manufacturing the product we uh, have also those replied... are all defenses now those are all defenses and defenses has to be proved only during trial so that means there must be a forum now for continue the uh, this one because with the very fact that you have got defenses your lot of these are differences where is the criminal intent that they can adduce to our actions there is no criminal intent in fact the counsel for the petitioner have just stated facts saying we have not delivered the product where have they proved that we have deceived them we stated we entered into a contract we asked them to invest money in our firm saying we want to develop a product for the manufacturing of this device we used their funds to develop that product which is still in the developmental stage as per a representation made to them which is also stated in the facts our process has been transparent from the beginning till the end your lordship they want to make a case for civil dispute however they are before this honorable court for a criminal proceeding that is my only contention in fact their arguments are mainly on the basis of a breach of contract they are saying we did not deliver the product to them we were unable to deliver the product to them there was a pandemic and the ppm clearly gave the nature of risk that were involved in this product just because we were late in uh, developing the product you cannot come and say we have criminal liability that is entirely wrong on part of the petitioners your lordship that is my only contention but uh, availability of uh, the criminal remedy does not bar them from uh, invoking the uh, criminal remedy i i agree with your lordship so that position you can indeed as, as long as there are elements of the criminal offense indeed your lordship i agree to that point however this is a purely civil dispute where no element of criminality is involved hence this is just a civil dispute that should not be entertained by this honorable court yes. your lordships if you are satisfied on this regard uh, my 420 argument is just that we have not deceived them uh, and our intention uh, to develop the product has been clear from the beginning in fact our expenditure towards and the funds that were utilized were just pre operative expenses which are necessary for us to develop the product so a case under 420 is not established in the present case the second limb that, that is the last contention that i will be me be, be making is to make a distinction between a case for cheating and a case for breach of contract for which the primary basis is the intention of the accused in the present case the uh, counsels for the petitioner have not uh, made out a case where we have fraudulently intended to uh, defraud them so when intention the mens rea aspect of these offenses has not been established we cannot be held li li liable for cheating it is only a case for breach of contract with that your lordship i pray before this honorable court that the present uh, present petition be held not maintainable if your lordships have any further questions i will be happy to answer you in this regard okay. much of pleasure yes. lordships my co counsel will address the bench yes. right. it was an honor arguing before this court yes Don't you feel that she has made all the both the points? Uh, your lordship, the council would be arguing on the criminal conspiracy point and the. Uh, no, no, you are calling. Don't you feel that she has made the point on both the issues? Uh, indeed, your lordship. Then but, why why you are on your legs now? Your lordship, the council, uh, as per our memorial, uh, I would be dealing with the last two issues of criminal conspiracy and the correctness of high court quashing the criminal proceedings, your lordship. Yes. Uh -huh. much obliged your lordships may it please this honorable court this is council number 2 appearing on behalf of the respondents in the present case yes. if your lordships permit the council move with the arguments yes much obliged your lordships uh, the first issue the council be dealing is whether a prima facie offence under section 120b of the sarkin penal code is established mm. uh, before moving with the arguments the council would like to state that the petitioners have not discharged the onus to prove the elements of uh, criminal conspiracy your lordships and they have also stated that uh, slow tech is a third party to the contact and that there is no necessity to add them as a party but in their arguments they have claimed that uh, the conspiracy is between plosh and slotech without adding them as a party to the case itself they cannot claim that there was conspiracy between plosh and slotech your lordships so can this it, itself can a party can a party be add, added later uh, your lordships in can their party if it is a necessary 
Uh, yes, your lordship. If the honourable court uh, feels that the necessary party should be added, it is the discretion of the court to add the party, your lordship. But we are pointing out that they have failed to add the necessary party to this case, and this itself shows that the necessary ingredient, which is uh, existence of two members, two persons, to uh, two persons to constitute the offence of criminal conspiracy itself, has not been proved by the uh, counsels for the petitioner. Who are the respondents then? Your lordships, they have added only Plosh Technologies as the respondent. Your lordships, oh, only one party. Eh? Yes, yeah. your lordships. In the uh, even during their arguments, they stated that Slotech is a third party to the contract, and there is no necessity to add them to the present case. Your lordships. So the first requirement itself, that is, there must be two or more persons present to constitute a uh, crime under crime of conspiracy. Your lordships. So the oh, first very, very basis of one hundred and twenty is gone. Yes, it, because yes, that's an agreement that cannot be agreement with yes, it's, the one only. That is the humble contention of the council, Your Lordship. But cannot the complaint proceed against uh, for the only other offence? Uh, your Lordship. Can uh, the complaint can proceed for the other uh, 420 offence? It can proceed. Uh, if uh, no, Your Lordship, it cannot proceed as my co-counsel had has proved that the necessary elements for Section 1 420 is also been not established by the petitioners, Your Lordship. So that is why the offences, both the offences under Section 420 and 120 B, has not been proved, Your Lordship. So the necessary oh, when the proving is that during trial, proving at this juncture they have caused at the initial stage. Indeed, your lordships, uh, as and that's the, what they are coming to the before the court saying that it should not have been caused at the initial stage, and opportunity should have been given as long as there are allegations of criminal charges. Uh, your lordships, uh, as the council, as my co-counsel stated, the High Court has correctly applied the guidelines given by this honorable court in the Bajanglal case, wherein when a frivolous complaint which is filed against the accused, which, which does not disclose the commission of any offence, should be quashed by the honorable High Court's your lordships. So the allegations of the complaint do not disclose any cognizable offence or any offence for that matter, your lordships. So that is why the honorable High Court of Newton has correctly quashed the criminal proceedings against the respondent, your lordships. Uh, if your lordships are satisfied that there is no offence of uh, 120B, the <laughs> council would like to move. No, no, no. That, uh, case cannot depend upon only one uh, aspect. There can uh, be other indeed, aspects your also. Indeed, your lordships. The council would be happy to prove that the other elements are also not present in the instant uh, case. Uh, uh, your lordships, uh, the first submission is that there is no agreement in the present case, your lordships. Uh, the respondent company entered into a contract with Slow Tech to fund the development of a product, your lordships. And this transaction was also approved in the general meeting of Plosh. And Munio, being a 15% equity shareholder, was also sent a notice about the extraordinary general meeting, your lordship. And this was, uh, and a resolution was also passed about the transaction, your, your lordships. So this is a purely a commercial transaction, and the transaction was also. Uh, and the transaction was also allowed in the uh, general meeting, your lordships. So there is if no. An offense, if an offense is by the company or a corporation, who, who, who should be or who could be prosecuted? Uh, your lordships. Uh, a company if, or any uh, other persons who could be prosecuted? Your lordships. Uh, as my co counsel stated, that a mens rea cannot be attributed towards the so company. Let us, say, let us say all other elements are there. If an offense is committed by the company under criminal law, who could be prosecuted, whether the company or the persons in charge of the company or all the directors of the company or all the subscribers or the shareholders, who should be prosecuted? Uh, your Lordships, as per the arguments of the petitioner, they have uh, filed a case only against the company, Your Lordships. Yes, forget about it. I'm asking generally, you, what, who should be prosecuted? Your Lordships, when uh, when an act has been committed by the persons who are in charge of the company, the company can be prosecuted for criminal liability, Your Lordships. But as per uh, the arguments of my co-counsel, we are of the humble contention that a company cannot be prosecuted for offences like Section 420 and 120B, Your Lordships. As it is a question of law, uh, we are raising this contention, Your Lordships. If, but, a check, if a check is issued by the company that is dishonored, who should be prosecuted? Your Lordships, if a check is issued by the company and that check is dishonored. Who, who could be prosecuted? Your Lordship, the company can be prosecuted, Your Lordship. Can be or uh, who, who should be prosecuted? Should be. Your Lordship, the who company. Is an accused? The company can be prosecuted through the directors of the company, Your Lordship. Through the directors. Yes, Your Lordship. Whether company should it be made as an accused? Yes, indeed, Your Lordship. Huh? As per your, to answer your question, a company should be made a party to a criminal prosecution, Your Lordship. Huh. 
but uh, also the directors of the company can be made party to the uh, criminal and, prosecution and that judge. liability of the directors or the, di the liability of the company what do we call them in under the law your lordship you say that offense is committed by the company you say that now the company also should be shown as an accused and this uh, office bearers or the person in charge could be prosecuted under which liability what kind of liability it is? Is there what criminal what criminal liability it is? Under company law, it is stated as doctrine of attribution that when the directors or the criminal law under criminal law, uh, your lordships, it's vicarious liability. Oh, so, oh, so your colleagues have helped you. Yes. Good. So both both can be prosecuted as yes. long as there are allegations. Uh, yes, indeed, your lordships. The only thing is that we have to find out in this case are there allegations of the commission of offence under 420 and 120. Uh, indeed, your lordships. The first and contention. And if any parties is omitted to be mentioned, it is there, it is a, a police can at any time implicate them. They can uh, come before the court also and seek implement. That also is permissible. Indeed, your lordships. So such an opportunity, if the high court has given, justice would have been done. No, your lordships. High court, high court has terminated the proceedings at the inception and has done a great injustice now. Your lordships, on a bare reading of the allegations made in the complaint, the High Court rightly uh, came to a conclusion that the complaint was frivolous and uh, the necessary ingredients to constitute the offences under Section 420 and 120B are not at all made out and not at all present in the complaint, your lordships. So that is why the High Court has we, followed the guideline. If we come to the conclusion that allegations are enough to proceed, uh, your lordships, but we are here to prove that the necessary ingredients are not at all present in the instant case, your lordships. Much obliged, your lordships. The uh, second submission is that the mens rea requirement for conspiracy is also not present in the instant case, your lordships. For this, the council would like to mention the case of Firozidin Bashuridin versus oh. State of Kerala, which is uh, stated in page 58 of our compendium, your lordships. Mm. Uh, what does it say? Uh, your lordships, the Honorable Court has held that like most crimes, Conspiracy requires an act and an accompanying mental state. To convict a person of conspiracy, it must be shown that the person agreed with others together that they would accomplish an unlawful object of the conspiracy, your lordships. Mm. But here, they have not proved any evidence. They have not proved any fact to show that there was an illegal intent and there was an agreement between the parties to prove the offense of conspiracy, your lordships. What kind of evidence you accept, uh, expect there? What kind of evidence? Whether direct evidence in a conspiracy, conspiracy, where does it uh, take place? Does it take place in the open? Not at all, your lordships. No, it is in the secrecy. So nothing, no evidence will be available. It should be found out. It should be inferred for which evidence has to be gathered. Yes, we'll ask them to go to the police station and gather, come back with the evidence. Then we'll come to know. Uh, your lordships, on a bare reading of their allegation and by their arguments, they have not even proved that the circumstantial evidences also point out to the direction there is a commission, there is commission of the offence, your lordships. Yes. So that is the second submission of the council, your lordships. There is no evidence, direct or indirect or circumstantial, your lordships. So there is no evidence to prove that there is commission of criminal conspiracy, conspiracy the, your lordships. But ma'am, but the very fact that they hid a very important fact, both the CEOs, the people in charge of those two companies. They hid a very important fact. Uh, I mean, forget what the relationship was, but there was a fact, big fact hidden. Your so lordships, uh, don't you think that was already a creation of Wednesday there saying, I mean, I'm of the opinion, maybe right at the time of PPM itself, uh, uh, Plosh was not going to do it themselves. Plosh was going to economically benefit, uh, uh, you know, conflicted party. Uh, your, your lordships, to answer your question, the uh, for... Uh, for proving the offense of 420, uh, which is to be read with uh, uh, section 120 in the instant case, to prove the conspiracy, they had, they should have shown that there was criminal intention at the inception of the PPM itself, your lordship. But when when you go through uh, paragraph 5, 6 and 7, the chronological order of the events have been mentioned, your lordship. We had entered into a P PPM with the uh, petitioners to develop a product. And the first line of para 6 clearly states that initially Plosh Plosh planned on developing the product themselves, but only at a later point of time that they entered into a contract with Slotech to develop the product, your lordships. But so at that time, there was no uh, there was no need to disclose at all, your lordships. No, but I uh, I'm what I'm of the opinion that maybe uh, you know everything does not have to be laid out, and that's why we need to go into the 
uh, details, right? That's why we have to give an opportunity because uh, it could be immediately after, it could be two months later, it could be six months later. You know, for two years, they have uh, sat on it. They could have always taken a third-party contractor. They could have finished it. So I'm of the opinion that right from the PPM time signing, whatever may have been written in the PPM, uh, Menzia, maybe it's, it was there. There are two different things. You can put whatever you want to cover yourself. But yeah. uh, uh, there is an op uh, a point there that maybe uh, their intention was not good right from the beginning. Right? Uh, indeed, not your lordships. To answer your question, there is no necessity on the respondents to disclose the fact that there was there was a personal relationship between the MD and CEO of the of both the companies. Are you sure? And the companies are indeed your lordships. There is no uh, necessity on the parties to disclose. So I'm sure there are many board meetings that happened, right? Indeed, in the, your in that two years. So you mean to say uh, there is no is there a requirement on the Companies Act? Is it a re related party transaction? Uh, indeed, not your lordships. To prove this, the council would like to mention uh, two clause seventy six of the Companies Act, your lordships. That is uh, to, if I may read, related party with reference to a company means a director or his relative, a key managerial person or his relative. Uh, when we go through section uh, two clause seventy seven, relative with reference to any person means. Uh, anyone who is related to another if and clause two states that they are husband and wife here the personal relationship is that of a living relationship your lordship so only when the persons and the parties that they uh, allege to be uh, conspirators are in are in a spousal relationship that we will have a obligation to disclose it in a meeting your lordship so when there is no statutory requirement to disclose the fact we cannot be held liable to as uh, we are suppressing the facts. And in India, what is the status for common law marriages? Your Lordships. What is the status for live-in marriages right now in India? Uh, your Lordships, right now, live-in relationships are not, live-in relationships are coming up and growing in our country. But they have not recognized it to be a relationship equal to that of marriages, Your Lordships. So, and uh, to... not recognized as marriage. They have not recognized as marriage. Indeed, your lordships. Uh, but still, for other purpose, if it is a, a domestic violence, is it recognized? For maintenance, is it recognized? Now, recently, for compensation or some other, uh, uh, this one also, I think, third, this one, it's all recognized. Why that same principle, it cannot be extended here? In companies, uh, there is. So that is why it is not a case allegations without any. That is, a, there is a link from your uh, suppression of the concealment of a material fact now. See, now this things becomes very clear. You can link it. Uh, your lordship to uh, and that is why see that is why a criminal complaint by uh, as of right it cannot be thrown out at the uh, threshold as long only see, if it is a false and frivolous means or on the face of it does not mean absolutely there is nothing for example uh, a wife files a complaint against the husband every day he comes and beats me and he does like that and in the complaint he makes allegations against the parents there is absolutely nothing but they are shown as accused such complaints can be thrown out because they prima facie do not disclose any commission of the offense by the parents. But against the husband only there are allegations. This is not such case. The material the suppression of the fact is born on the uh, memorandum itself. Then this uh, relationship uh, fortifies it. Your and, lordships, uh, your lordships uh, the benefits that are given to a live-in partner is only concerned with family matters, your lordships. Under the Companies Act, when uh, I quoted section 2 clause 76 and 77, uh, and to an important factor is that 2 clause 77, it is an exhaustive list, list your lordship. So they have included only husband and wife as relatives, your lordship. So if uh, if the if specifically they have excluded live-in partners, it cannot be interpreted to include live-in partners under liability of companies act, your lordship. So the uh, meaning cannot be given to include Live, uh, include live-in partners also, Your Lordship. So when there is no statutory requirement to, to disclose such a factor, it cannot be stated to be suppression of facts, Your Lordship. So uh, the humble contention is that there was no requirement on the part of the respondent to disclose such a personal relationship, Your Lordship. But the company monopolizes its choice, gives the contract to slow tech, where there is an established relationship of a living relationship. The total breach of good faith Total breach because uh, you just monopolize your choice. Your Lordships, if you may refer to paragraph number seven of the mood proposition, uh, the both Plosh and Slowtech were also unaware of this fact. And the entire negotiation for the development of the product was done only through COOs of the companies, Your Lordship. So there is no way 
there is no way to there is no fact to show that the mds who are in a personal relationship have have influenced the negotiation of the uh, contract your lordship so there is no bad faith at all your lordship and as stated earlier there is no requirement to uh, disclose the fact also your lordships how do you establish this i mean you are saying fine they have nothing to do but how did you sir you just mentioned one extraordinary meeting where this thing has been passed and you didn't find your it responsible to tell your partner company that we have done such a measure your lordships the con the comp the contract which was going to be given to slow tech was passed through a resolution of the general meeting your lordship and uh, the disclosing of the personal relationship is not at all a statutory requirement under the companies act also your lordship so that is why we are claiming that it is not concealment of fact and it is not at all a material fact to be established to be uh, disclosed your lordship so if your lordship so permit the council like to move to the last issue yes much obliged your lordships Uh, the last issue is whether the High Court of Newton was right in quashing the criminal proceedings against the respondents, your lordships. The humble contention of the counsel is that the Honorable uh, High Court of Newton was correct in quashing the criminal proceedings, your lordship. Firstly, the counsel would like to submit that the High Court under Section Four Eighty Two has wide powers to quash the criminal proceedings, your lordships. For this, the counsel would like to state the case of uh, State of Karnataka versus L. Muni Swami, wherein the Honorable Court. Uh, it is in page number seventy one of the Compendium, your lordships. what you call it wide power is it circumscribed by certain uh, conditions in the section itself uh, your lordships indeed as per section 482 uh, the inherent powers of the high court is given to prevent abuse of process of the uh, one, process of the court okay. and to secure the ends of justice and another one is there uh, so under three circumstances another one is there so why you say that wide powers Only in these three circumstances. Huh? What are the other? Uh, the abuse of the process of court. Yes. Uh, then abuse of process of court to secure the ends of justice and to give effect to any other order any of other the court. order of the court. Where do you fit in in this case? Your Lordship. That is the only thing. The inherent powers are there. It is not that it is only to do these three kinds of things, not to any other thing. we come under the last two circumstances wherein it is to prevent the abuse of process of court and to secure the ends of justice your lordship the high court has rightly quashed the criminal proceeding to secure the ends of justice and to prevent the abuse of court and the high court has correctly applied the principles so it means if there were no material no allegation then if you are proceeded then to prevent that the high court can here there are allegations and only thing is that you repeatedly say that there is nothing Your lordships, the allegations are only. But you have pointed out so many materials now, all the three of us. So, so we can't say that there is an because of there the the high court has caused because uh, if it is allowed to continue, it will cause uh, uh, what you call abuse of the process. It is not so. The allegations that they have uh, mentioned are only false accusations, your lordships, and the complaint do not disclose a prima facie. Also true, has to be found out only during investigation or trial. Your Lordship, you should know the scope of the High Court, the scope of quashing. Uh, you should accept the allegations as true. That is what you call prima facie case. Whether on the uh, uh, look of it, on the face of it, whether it discloses the offence or not, that is the only limited inquiry. If that does not disclose, that is the end of it. That has been done by the Honorable High Court of Newton, and only after conclude, only after a due uh, due uh, investigation, it has stated that the a prima facie offence has not been made out in the instant case, Your Lordships. The High Court of Newton has preliminary looked into the issue, and on the bare reading of their allegation in the complaint, it did not disclose a prima facie offence at all, Your Lordships. So that is why the High Court has applied correctly applied the principles which has been given by this Honorable Court in the state of uh, Haryana versus Bajinlal case, Your Lordship, and has quashed the criminal proceedings, Your Lordship. And the third submission is that there exists only a civil dispute, Your Lordships, and not a criminal complaint, criminal proceeding at all, Your Lordships. The petitioner's conduct of sending a legal notice first and claiming. compensation and later filing a criminal complaint after the refusal of compensation itself shows that they have instituted the criminal complaint only to harass the respondents in the instant case your lordship when we have refused to give them the compensation they have uh, proceeded to file this criminal complaint which itself shows their malafide intention to harass us with this criminal complaint your lordship so 
that is why the high court has correctly point correctly correctly quashed the criminal proceedings lawships for this the council would like to state an important case of uma shankar gopalika where this is state of bihar wherein uh, the case has also been countered with similar set of facts lawships it was also a case where the charges for section 420 and 120 b was uh, filed and the court has clearly stated that uh, it is a well settled that every breach of contract would not give rise to an offence of cheating and only in those cases where breach of contract would amount to cheating where there was deception played at the very inception itself your lordships so if the intention to cheat ha cheat has developed later on the same cannot amount to cheating at all so in the present case it can be Uh, unequivocally stated that there was no deception and there was no mens rea present at all, your lordship. So, so all the, the offences, all the developments are the aftermath of the. Not at all, your lordships. Uh, the uh, in the present case, the High Court has correctly applied the guidelines given and has correctly quashed the criminal proceedings as the complaint you did not. That, that's not what you say that because what all thing uh, have happened later uh, subsequently cannot have a bearing on. Indeed, that. indeed, your lordships. As long as. the intention to deceive is not there was not there in the earliest of the document indeed indeed your lordships much obliged your lordships so thus the uh, counsels for the respondent humbly submit that the high court of newton was correct in quashing the criminal proceedings under the inherent jurisdiction of the high court your lordships uh, if your lordships permit the counsel like to move to the prayer right. Much obliged, your lordships. Right. Therefore, in light of the issues raised, legal precedents, principles, and authorities cited, provisions of the constitution applied, arguments and pleadings advanced, the respondent most humbly prays this honourable court to dismiss the special leave petition in limine or declare that the company cannot be held liable for offences under section four twenty or and one twenty b of the Sarkin Penal Code. Declare that an offence under section four twenty and one twenty b. of the sarkin penal court has not been established and declare that the high court of newton was correct in quashing the criminal proceedings under its inherent jurisdiction and pass any other order which the honorable court may deem fit in the interest of equity justice and good conscience your lordships all of which are humbly prayed yes. it was an honor arguing this much obliged your lordships yes. Yes. Ah, uh, rebuttal. Yes. Yeah. Your lordships, uh, before proceeding with my rebuttals, I would clearly like to state that the compendium which has been provided before this uh, bench has not been provided to the. appellants at all your lordships and therefore the same cannot no, be no, why why you have not made uh, the co-conspirator a party your lordships i will certainly get into it firstly i just like to establish that the compendium provided by the respondents has not been provided to the appellants and the same cannot be held valid in the interest of the principles of natural justice is it why that's why of course we have not looked into it but the procedure requires that to give to them also mm, that is uh... your lordships regardless of whatever is... that that i do not know what is the requirement as per the rules it is not there so uh, you could have kept it with yourself today <laughs> and see always in the open court whatever you give to the court always you should serve on the other side even if there are no rules these are the uh, court or what you call the principles of natural justice etiquette also yes because uh, behind them back or without informing them you can't uh, produce any document before the court yes i thought that you have given to them first it's before we come Yes, your lordships. To answer your question regarding why Slotek has not been made a party, so are you this? reconciled with this? So shall we make it? It will not give rise to any issue now. But your lordships, regarding not, the campaign, we can keep it aside so, completely. Yes, we will not uh, refer to this at all, so that will solve it. Certainly, I don't lordships. think we have uh, referred uh, to the this one. Yes, certainly, your lordships. Your lordships, moving to the rebuttals by firstly answering the very question posed by your lordships, which hmm. is why Slotek has not been made uh, made a party to this particular suit. your lordships as mentioned very clearly by the appellants in this matter this matter deals only with the impugned order of the honorable high court of nutan yes that high court uh, order has been passed only because plosh has ended up uh, approaching the honorable high court and therefore when the same is being dealt with slotek cannot be made a party to this particular instance yes. your lordships if your lordships permit the allowance of trial proceedings the appellants will for sure make slotek a party to the criminal proceedings 
your lordship is moving ahead the respondent has challenged the iridium judgment your lordship whether honorable high court honorable court has held that a corporation can be charged for the charge regarding mens rea section 120a in itself talks about two or more persons and section 11 defines a corporation as a person your lordships and therefore the same cannot be held valid when you are questioning the entire judgment moving ahead your lordships from the very onset the respondents have denied the grave injustice regarding which the appellants have approached this honorable court your lordships in this matter it must be noted that there is a loss of 80 million dollars to the appellants which the respondents have very conveniently ignored and not bothered dealing with at all your lordships and therefore they are ignoring the very aspect of a grave injustice your lordships moving ahead establishing that there is a your lordships the respondents have very well established themselves that there is a breach of contract and therefore they also continue to talk about how a pandemic is the reason why the breach of contract has happened your lordships these are two different situations firstly if you are dealing with a breach of contract it is because you have failed to abide by the uh, stipulations that were laid down in the contract if you're bringing pandemic all, into all the all these issues are not relevant at this juncture these even the facts for that matter at this juncture is whether the complaint on the face of it discloses the elements of the offense if so whether the court could have quashed it certainly secondly whether the allegations made therein do they make out an offense against the comp company if so whether uh, uh, the third one issue is whether conspiracy whether on the principle of conspiracy could they have been dragged in that is the only issues these are all essentials uh, maybe built to uh, make out a story that's all Yes. Certainly, your lordships. In this particular instance, the reason why the uh, appellants have been trying to establish a storyline or a chain of events is to merely show that prima facie itself, a case of the offences alleged can be maintained. Yes. Your lordships, moving ahead with what you have mentioned, in this instance, your lordship, even when we talk about the very inception, in para 5, your lordships, it has been mentioned that uh, Plosh Technologies Private Limited is a limited company regarding that is primarily dealing with technologies they have approached munio to invest in that very technology and the very fact that they're a technological uh, industry makes it very clear that there is a certain amount of benefit of advantage which is going to be given to the company in regards to their very ability to provide such a product your lordships further even though the ppm very clearly states that it is going to be inter alia for the manufacturing your lordships that clearly lays down the investment objectives where the money can be used and where the money cannot be used. So in this case, your lordships, it can be clearly stated that it will be used only for inter alia, the manufacturing purposes. Your lordships, the councils for the respondents have gone ahead to try and establish how they are doing so by firstly providing only 10% to the slow debt to produce the product which they so vehemently agree that they wanted to develop. Secondly, to the extent your lordship, the funds have been so insufficient that insolvency proceedings have been initiated against low tech your lordships your lordships it must be noted that at this very juncture it is unreasonable for any party here to believe that a product can still be developed by slow tech when there are insolvency proceedings initiated against them and they do not even have the money to do so your lordships that firstly negates the basis of the entire uh, argument of respondents that till now the development is still in place the development your lordships is not in place and the save was not just hidden from your lordship but it was also hidden from the appellants in this instant matter your lordships moving ahead they have consistently mentioned how the money that has been used even though it was inter alia agreed your lordships inter alia does not require only for the manufacturing your lordships if a company is going to the brink of insolvency and you are trying to produce a product and you are trying to fund that by funding yourself, your lordships, the council cannot see logic in the same. If they are trying to ensure that people can produce that pr very product, can develop that very product, the funding should have gone directly to slow tech. They are funding themselves for a product that is not even being developed by them in the first place, your lordships. I I'm sorry, what is the connect again? They are a venture capital fund, right? Uh, your lordships. Um, not a venture capital fund. So sorry, why would you fund slow tech directly? For whom? Your lordships, the council hmm. would like to clarify. Uh, Munio investments, the appellants in this matter are not funding anyone but Plosh. The investment has been made. How the money is going to be used is for the manufacturing purposes. Further, to manufacture, uh, Plosh has approached Slotech. Now, after that, your lordship, only an insufficient amount of 10% has been used to produce that product, to develop that product. 
further the maximum amount remaining by plosh has been directed to their own funding your lordships and the councils for the respondents have been trying to establish how proving i uh, have been trying to establish how funding themselves has helped in benefiting and procuring the development of the product which in this case your lordships cannot be held because if you are funding yourself even though the company that is making the product is on the brink of insolvency the both don't lie together your ladyship it's simply the humble contention of uh, the appellants moving ahead your ladyship in this particular matter to show the dishonest concealment firstly the insolvency the very fact that the product at hand cannot be further developed has not been mentioned to munio in any particular instance your lordship even though we sent an inquiry we only received a response stating the developmental stage your lordship that is a very vague response that does not hold true especially in these particular instances your lordship if their main objective also your lordship it must be noted that there are two contracts Firstly, the one between Munio and Plosh. Secondly, the one between Plosh and Slowdeck. Munio and Plosh's agreement, your lordships, had a time-bound restriction of two years. Whereas at the very inception, as your uh, the councils for respondents have been seeking, at the very inception, the time-bound contractness has not been followed with Plosh and Slowdeck. So there has been no restriction on them to create a certain product within a stipulated time. If you have promised Munio in the first place that there is going to be a product within two years. why would you not go ahead and make that a stipulation in the other contract that is being formed for the procurement of the for the development of the product secondly your lordship the councils for the respondents have clearly been mentioning the malified intention on the basis of which the particular uh, the criminal proceedings were quashed your lordships it must be noted in this particular instance munio is aware of the pandemic that has hit the entire country it has showed nothing but great compassion and empathy by doing by even though when the product is not delivered two years have lapsed my product is not with me the appellant's response to that was still not to file a suit for breach of contract it was still not to initiate criminal proceedings if i had a malified intention your lordship my only proceedings would have been that your lordships in this matter it can be clearly seen in para 8 that our first response was a inquiry was a clear inquiry later a notice to ask about why we have not been receiving the product that we should have received your lordship the product is for plosh let's confirm that. your your the yeah suddenly yeah, let's lordship. accept that munio was a, again i'm saying the same thing you know the, this is not a service company where plosh is developing a product and giving it to munio the product is being made for plosh munio um, invested money they got what they are due i e what did they get your lordships they got the shares 15% Sorry, your lordships okay so now going forward this product was for plosh plosh okay so if anything yes there might have been a breach what are, what is missing in all this is whether there were board meetings whether uh, plosh was part of all these discussions uh, as to who where the money has to be spent maybe the pandemic hit there's a gap there in the facts but uh, you know let's keep that clear okay certainly your ladyship uh, the council corrects her stance and clearly now mentions that the investment being made by munio in the particular product and the product's exclusive license was available only to plosh regardless your uh, ladyship when a contract has been entered into expecting the development of a product by the end of 2 years it is for the sole basis that now munio will be receiving the returns from the investment that it has been yeah, made your ladyship it must be noted that there is an 80 million dollars at stake here your ladyship it also needs to be noted that there plosh has already raised 200 million dollars out of that 80 million dollars is for our uh, pro the product in question and further the same has not been accounted for your ladyship moving ahead the malified intention the malified intention that the council was uh, discussing earlier in this instance your ladyship firstly they have very clearly tried to establish how they had no requirement to mention that the top heads of both companies were in a living relationship your ladyship even if let's keep that uh, uh, even if we take that argument in its totality in for even the arguendo purposes how can you not establish a conflict of interest that arises between two parties when the main heads are in a living relationship firstly also the negotiation that has been brought in by my you have to answer what the contention what they say that statutorily doesn't require certainly your lordship you are equal see what they are required to disclose is what the statute requires and that is what they have answered you have to now you have to reply to that 
your lordship uh, the reason why we bring in this particular uh, matter in this picture your lordships is considering the fact that there is an investment being made by plosh to slow tech for the product that is mutually going to get you to answer the, the contentions what they have raised they say that when the statute does not require that to be stated what fault can you find by not stating so? your lordship merely uh, your lordship therefore in this particular instance this is going to just be used as an argument or purpose to show the ethicality or the morality of the very or uh, to establish the mens rea your lordship from the very beginning if no, there is don't a confuse ethics and morality <laughs> less mens rea so your lordship all operate in a different field altogether your lordship yes, in sir. this instance when two heads are in a living relationship you already have a certain amount of personal bias that can never be taken away from that situation mm -hmm. even though slow even though munio was definitely informed which again we did not claim that we didn't we weren't aware of it uh, clarifying the statements being made by the counsel for the respondents it must be established your lordships that if munio was aware at the very instance that there is a conflict of interest for the very investment being made again your lordships it must be it may be brought by the respondents or the negotiation processes were taken by two separate people altogether your lordships negotiation processes happen only when you first decide that an investment will be made who decides the investment the board of directors who is the managing director mr kalzar sata who is in a relationship with who oh the uh, high ranking official of slotech your lordship this chain of events the chain of the picture that has been created here cannot be ignored when we're talking about the very inception firstly no time bound contract secondly no disclosure of facts and thirdly continuous concealment of facts the very basis they rely on is that there is a transparency that they have maintained which your lordships the council so for appellate is it your case is, is it your case this uh, company is used as a front to cover up these uh, illegalities your lordships that, the, is, that is not the fact in this case your lordships the only case is the fact that a plosh and slotech in this particular instance have conspired and have cheated and have resulted in the ultimate loss for munio your lordship because if even if you notice this for uh, argument of purposes the money that has been received which is of munio is now being used inside only with plosh it's funding who mr kalzar sata the one who decided to invest in another company where his living partner is a high ranking official on top of that additionally your lordships the counsel for the appellants have refused to show any accountability if your lordships the counsel for the respondents were so sure of the fact of all their offenses or of all their actions and all the legality of their actions the basis for a criminal proceeding would not be quashed with the very nascent stages your lordships we never got to prove the fact that we have been aggrieved we never got to prove the offenses that have been alleged and even before the same could have been delved into the proceedings were quashed your lordship it must be noted the fact that the criminal proceedings are quashed in this instant matter lays a very bad precedent because firstly it must be noted that munio investments private limited is a foreign entity it has regardless of the pandemic has regardless of every other situation and the breach already committed in the very instance has refused to pull out their investment your lordships firstly they have tried to be cooperative they have tried to understand the grievances they have tried to find a middle ground if at that when very it, basis when it is quashed on facts how does it become a precedent your lordship simply because then it would be very easy for all major companies to quash any proceeding that comes on, up ahead on the facts of this case it doesn't become a precedent for the other cases your lordships it is a simple understanding that if uh, munio investments limited uh, if munio investments limited goes through a massive loss of 80 million dollars and thereby receives no recourse to uh, meet the ends of justice and plosh regardless of all the offenses that they have committed get to go away scot free your lordships that just lays a bad precedent for all the companies your lordships with this the council concludes and yes. proves that plosh has been nothing but uh, negligent with their acts and has also been guilty for the offenses under section 420 and 120b right. of the criminal code negligence also a bad uh, your lordship <laughs> i the council retract that <laughs> much obliged you, you can add offenses to it <laughs> It was a pleasure arguing with the bench a lot. Yes. Much well done. Pleasure. Well done. Yes. Good. Wow. Reply to the reply. Huh? Is, that also is permissible. Huh? Is it permissible? At your discretion. Discretion. Enter the game. Yes. What do you want to say? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. Let us see. Let us see. It is a pleasure to 
here yes, students, those who are prepared and they have got some substance. As long as there is substance, we hear. If there is no substance, uh, definitely not worth substance. hearing. Yes. So firstly, the counsels for the petitioner are the ones claiming conspiracy. Uh, so under section 120, it requires two persons for conspiracy, but they have not that added. She has made it. Yes. Secondly, we clarify that we are questioning the position of law taken by the Supreme Court in Iridium case. We are not questioning uh, in that aspect. So we clarify that. Secondly, uh, we have uh, the council stated that we have established a case for breach of contract. We have not established a case for breach of contract. We only state that if you want to uh, adduce any liability to us, it is for a breach of contract for which remedy is not before this honorable court. The councils again and again, even in the rebuttals, go into their arguments of stating that this is just the case. Uh, they have not uh, complied with the terms of the contract, etc., etc. So fifthly, uh, they stated that at the inception, we did not tell them that they were going to get into a contract with slow tech. Philosophs, the petitioners are a venture capital company. They would have analyzed the risks of the investment that they are going to make. So they cannot at a later stage come and tell us that uh, they did not know of a particular fact or that they were not aware. They are a venture capital company and they analyze these risks when they sign the PPM. Sixthly, the counsels for the petitioner talk about insolvency proceedings. It is to be noted that insolvency arrived at a later stage. Slowtech took a lot of loans for this process and at a later stage, they became insolvent. Secondly, under section 13 of the insolvency and bankruptcy code, it, it, there's a, a provision for public announcement. Wherein when CIRP proceedings are initiated, public announcement will be made as to insolvency. It is a deemed notice. Why should we go and inform them that the company is insolvent? They should be aware of the fact that uh, over time, the Slowtech uh, Limited became an insolvent company. So we clarify them in that regard. Uh, after that, the councils repeatedly state that we are funding ourselves. First of all, we ask them to refer to clarification number nine of the mood proposition. It clearly states Plosh was funding Slowtech. So it is a mistake on their part to say we are funding ourselves. It is a mistake and assumption that I think the petitioners are making because they did not include Slotech as a party to this proceeding itself. After this, uh, my last contention is that they uh, place a lot of emphasis on the aspect of time uh, in under the contract to say that we have uh, breached the contract. If they want to make these uh, allegations, it should not be before this honorable court. For a breach of contract, they can initiate a proceeding before a, an appropriate forum. With that, I come to, I conclude my sarabatals, your yes. lordships. Much obliged. So both parties have done well. Yes. Now it is our problem. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes, yes. So with the pen, we have to write it in the Sir, ink, no? Can switch the button. Can I use a pencil? Or use a pencil? No, I can use a pencil also. That's fine.
Thank you, judges, uh, for the very nice final round of the Justice and Santosh Hegre National Moot Court competition. I will request the judges to proceed towards seminar hall one for the declaration of results and valedictory session. And I also request all the other participants and team members and volunteers to proceed for seminar hall once the judges leave the courtroom. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. 